When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. In this Ask Shauna episode, I'm answering the burning question, should I break up over money? And giving you my insights into how to have a successful money relationship with your partner. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Hey, welcome back to the show. This episode was inspired by a question from Nicole who wrote, Shauna, I am so thrilled to have found the Everyone's Talking Money podcast. You cover so many topics I never knew I wanted to learn about, and I'm always sharing them as you ask me to do with friends, so thank you. Okay, I've got a doozy of a question. My partner and I are always getting into fights over money. We've been together for five years now and are considering marriage, but I'm pretty scared. We've gone to therapy about money, but it feels like nothing changes. My partner and I both sneak and hide things we buy without telling the other one, which I know is bad. I've listened to a lot of your episodes on mindset and money trauma, and I've really gotten into them, but I've had a hard time talking to my partner about what I learn and what I'm feeling. I don't know. I just feel like all we're doing is fucking up our relationship by letting money take such a front seat. Any advice, any tips, anything else you could share, I'd appreciate it. I'm going to be bold and say that I'm sure I'm not the only one listening who is letting money fuck up my relationship. (laughs) Well, Nicole, thank you so much for a very candid question. I totally appreciate it. It's not often that I swear on this podcast, but I'm glad you wrote those words because it feels like that is really the feeling you're having about your money. So they needed to be said. So you are for sure not the only one for sure that has dealt with complicated money situation with your partner. In fact, a recent American Institute of CPAs study revealed that 73% of couples say that money decisions are definitely a source of tension in the relationship. No surprise there, right? It also impacts what goes on in the bedroom. So 47% of couples say that this form of financial stress has a negative impact in terms of financial and physical intimacy. So two things that most couples fight about, right? We know they are sex and money, and they are also very deeply woven together. If you've been in a relationship, it's certainly a serious or a long-term relationship, you know how deeply these things are woven together. And I am certainly not your expert for sex, but I have totally got you when it comes to money. And I definitely have some thoughts about this. So this is going to be a very candid episode of myself where I'm just going to tell you about my own relationships and things that I've learned working with other couples. Another layer of complexity is that money trauma and money abuse can happen in relationships and it happens a lot. I was in a previous relationship where money was used as a weapon 
that that person wanted me to abide by his money rules or else there were issues. And I I just didn't have a vocabulary at the time for what was happening, but I now know that that was a form of financial abuse. And there are lots of different forms of financial abuse. And it it doesn't just happen from men to women. <laughs> so I don't want it to to sound like that's the case. I have seen cases of financial abuse in all different types of relationships. And it, it is, again, because money is so complex. It is so emotion-filled. And so it's easy to use money in that way. It's very easy to use money as as a weapon in a relationship. Even when you don't mean to, sometimes it just happens. So if you don't do this with money, I'm going to do this, right? That's that's a lot of couples have this kind of vocabulary. Or if you spend money on this, I'm going to do X. Or why did you buy this without asking me? We could go on and on (laughs) about all of those different scenarios. But the problem is, again, we come into our relationships with our own issues around money and our own, here we go, our own fucked up relationships around money. And then we somehow just expect that the other person is just going to magically do what we would want done with our money. And as you know, it just doesn't work that way. A, we're not mind readers. I can't tell what my husband's thinking. He can't tell what I'm thinking. Sure, we've been together many, many, many years. (laughs) We have a pretty good idea of what the other person is thinking, but not really, right? All you know is your own human existence. But it's really easy to project yourself onto someone else. And then that really creates conflict. It creates confusion. It creates the place for these arguments to kind of spring from. And I find that most fights around money, they never get resolved because you just don't have the tools to resolve them. So Nicole, I'm really happy that you're going to therapy. And I'm really sorry to hear that what you've been learning hasn't exactly been working. So the problem is that, right, these issues, they linger and then they come up over and over and over again. So hopefully this is resonating with someone, not not to shame you or blame you or to make you feel guilty, but this is this is the reality, right? This is the reality, friends, is we all have a really tricky relationship <laughs> with money and trying to figure out how to do that in a relationship with someone else is really hard because <laughs> we often haven't figured out how to have a relationship that is healthy with money ourselves. So there's no way somebody else is going to be able to do this for us. So when I got uh, remarried, I've been married two times, I got remarried nine years ago, I decided I wanted to try and do money very differently. So I can share with you, Nicole, and anyone else who's listening, some of the things that I've done that have worked. I've seen a lot of things that haven't worked. And I've sat across the table from so many different couples who've really been at a place of just complete crisis in the relationship over money. And what I learned is that it's not usually about the money. It's usually about a lot of other things that aren't discussed, but money feels like the thing we can blame it on, right? Maybe it's the issue at hand, but it's not the ultimate issue. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that as we kind of move through this episode. So here are some things that have worked for me. When we got married, we decided to use joint accounts. My husband and I both view money as a partnership. We're married. And so for us, it made sense that we had joint accounts. Now, I know that there is probably a lot of you listening and you're shaking your head like you would never, ever want to do that with your partner. And so the first question I want to ask you is, why not? right? You might have a very good reason why not, and I'm not debating the reason why not, but what I am talking about is just thinking about this idea of partnership and how can you, even if you had things separate, how can you still make it feel like you have a partnership with your partner? So we have joint accounts and we set up what we call a don't ask, don't tell spending limit. So what this looks like is it's a certain amount of money for us, 
that we can both individually spend money on without having to ask the other person. We don't have to ask permission, but we also don't have to explain our purchase, right? So, you know, sometimes when you go buy something, you're in a relationship and you come home and ladies in particular, I'm speaking to you because A, I'm a female and I know this happens, (laughs) but could happen to anyone, right? But you hide the purchase. You hide it, you sneak it in, you sneak it in your purse, and then you put the item on, your partner's like, oh, I've never seen that before. Is that new? And you're like, no, it's not new. That was in the back of my closet, (laughs) right? How many times have you done that? Come on. I have done that so many times. I learned that as a kid in my house growing up. We would go shopping and my mom would be like, okay, just, you know, just, take that in, like, don't let dad see that we, we bought these things, whatever it is. And so I thought, okay, well, that's just part of being in a relationship. But it's not exactly the transparent, partnery thing to do. So we set up this spending limit, and it's amount of money we can spend and we feel good about it. And then we don't have to ask each other, it's worked really, really well. Another thing that we did is we have weekly, very short, I'm talking about 15 minutes or less, but enjoyable money dates. So a money date is literally you're just talking about your goals, you're talking about what's coming up financially, what's maybe happened the last week, like how are we on grocery spending this month or eating out or do we want to do something fun this month? We're just kind of getting a little bit on the same page, right? But it's painless because it's a very short amount of time. We usually do it at a brewery or over a glass of wine or sitting in the backyard, something fun. And we bring an energy to it that is relaxed, that is not fearful or stressed, right? And so doing these helps you stay on the same page, but it also really helps to negate any conflict because there really isn't anything to to argue about. Another thing that we do, this was really important to me, especially the second time around, is that we both know where all the money is. We know all the accounts. We know all the passwords. We know all the logins. We both have access to all of that information. In my previous marriage, believe it or not, I was a money expert still. (laughs) And I did not know where every single account was. I didn't know all the logins, all the passwords. So when I got divorced, I had to be a detective and figure out all of that information. I don't want that. A, I don't want you to break up with your partner, but the reality is relationships fall apart. So I want you to know all of this information, even if you don't handle the day-to-day money in your relationship. I still just want you to know all the information because, again, this helps to alleviate conflict in the relationship. So because of that, we both obviously have access to the same accounts. There's no hiding. There's no hiding an account. There's no hiding a credit card. There's no hiding credit card debt even. It's just, it's all out there in the open. And the beauty of that is that you don't have to come into the relationship from a place of fearing. When we got married, I still had some debt from my previous marriage and I was a little embarrassed about it, honestly, because again, I'm a money expert. I should have this all figured out. But the reality of human life is that sometimes you go through phases where you have to get into debt. (laughs) That's just the way it goes. But I... I just realized that being transparent about it was just such a load off my chest. It just felt really, really good to share that information and to have it not be a big deal because there wasn't anything in secret. There wasn't anything that I was hiding. Now, I'm not going to say that there weren't ever tensions around that. There were, but that's okay. Tension is okay. You can handle tension. You just don't want to have these knock down, drag out fights where, again, like Nicole, you were saying, nothing ever changes, nothing ever happens. And usually with money fights and arguments, you end up walking away and you don't feel good. 
nothing got solved. You probably said a lot of really crappy things about your partner, and they probably said a lot of really crappy things about you. And then that just further creates this crater in your own relationship with money. So they're just it's just not a great place to be. We also decided before we got married, and again, you can do all of these things. You don't have to be married. There's no prerequisite to being married. But for us, this was just our track. We decided to have this shared vision for our life and what we wanted to spend money on. So that just took a lot of conflicts off the table because it's it's not that things will never change. It's not that our vision will never change, but it's a good barometer, kind of a good roadmap for us to just be like, well, there are just certain things we're just not going to spend money on because they're just not important to us. But things like travel, travel was so incredibly important to us. So it made sense for us to just find some money every month, however often we could to put towards a couple of trips a year because we just felt we love traveling. And that was just such a great way for us to connect. So there are lots of things like that date nights and, you know, going to get ice cream once a week, things like that. They may seem silly, but they come from this shared vision. And that shared vision, again, just helps solidify the partnership. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. We also decided that we needed to have some fun. And I think fun is this huge element that so many people personally leave out uh, of of their money, let alone couples, because money can be so stressful. And I know especially when money is tight, and I've had those times in my life where there just isn't a lot of excess. (laughs) And so the idea of having fun with your money seems super counterintuitive. 
But I'm going to encourage you, even if it's a couple of bucks a month, it doesn't matter exactly the amount of money. It matters that you're having some fun with your money. So like occasionally we'll take a small amount of money and we'll do like a shopping spree each with it where they're just no questions asked. We can go, we can buy whatever we want with it. We can just have fun. And even though it's like a, I don't know, an individual exercise, so I'm buying for me, he's buying for him, there still is this collaborative kind of fun, I don't know, feeling around it. And I think money needs to have some of that. It needs some sort of joyous moments. Like maybe your thing as a couple is that you're, you know, you're passionate about different causes. So maybe you put your money towards, your fun money towards some of those causes. It could be anything. Maybe with your fun money, you like to maybe, you buy your partner something, your partner buys you something every month. I don't know. I mean, the beauty is that you get to create this however you want to. But I really think, like specifically thinking about your question to Cole is, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of fun in your relationship around money. It feels like there is a lot of stress and it's probably, I don't even know, you know, what the original issue is or how it started out. But, you know, if we don't deal with it, then over time, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where sometimes we even forget, what was that initial issue I had about money? I don't even remember, right? But now we're in like fight 25 We've totally lost the point. We've both just completely tore each other down and we still haven't solved whatever the issue is. <laughs> so this is just my little my little prompt for you to have some fun. Another thing we do is that we always try to understand what a fight about money really is about. And as I said in the opening, it usually isn't about money, but it's usually about something else in the relationship. So Maybe you feel like you're not getting enough love and attention, or maybe you're jealous of the time that your partner spends, you know, out to drinks with their friends, or I mean, it could be any situation, right? But there's usually this like deeper underlying issue that is that is happening there. And so it's really good and super hard, but something you can do is just really sit and think about, okay, what is that bottom line issue? Like, what are we really fighting about? Is it really money? Mm, Again, a lot of times I would say nine out of 10 times the answer is no. Yes, you are proactively fighting about money, but what is below that? Like, can you peel those onion layers back? And can you think about what's going on? And can we work on that piece? Like, can we be honest and open enough to look at that piece in our relationship? We also go to therapy regularly. We go individually. We go together. (laughs) We even had our therapist at the time when we got married actually stood up for us in our wedding, which I know is crazy. It seems bizarre, but before we actually met each other, we had been going to therapy separately, of course. And each of our therapists separately had asked us to write a list of the things like pie in the sky things that we wanted to have in our next relationship. And not just to focus on things like, well, the person's got to be rich and they got to be good looking. Because let me tell you, you can lose money at any point in time and you can certainly lose looks. (laughs) So those are not two good things to just kind of like hang your hat on if you ask me. And this is coming from someone who has been divorced before. So I understand those dynamics. But I I think my list, I don't have a copy of my list. I'm really sad that I don't anymore. But I think I had like 10 or 12 things, maybe 10 things on the list. So on the first date, when I went out with Jeff, comes to find out he has done the exact same thing and he has a list as well. So of course we talked about our list. We'd both been divorced. So you'll find that when you've been divorced before, you really kind of like get to the point pretty fast (laughs) when you start dating again. And so we talked about those lists and they were great because 
it really helped you understand that person. But it also was really helpful for me to actually create the list because it made me focus on things that I want and things that I don't want and like really think about what it means to be a partner. So long story short, therapy has really been a backbone for both of us. And, um, you know, I, I know that there are a lot of people that look negatively on therapy or think that it's about there's something wrong with me. I need to get fixed. It isn't about getting anything fixed. What it really is about is just helping you be better, feel better every day, be more confident, be less stressed. Um, I, I mean, there's so many different things. And I even go to therapy when things are going well, when I feel really good, because that's also a great time to just, okay, let's make sure things are progressing in the right direction. But therapy is a great place to work on the relationship and if you're having money issues or money difficulty, it's a great place to t- talk about these things with a therapist because what you end up getting is a lot of tools. And then you can use those tools in your relationship and or not use those tools in your relationship as a lot of people do. That's okay, right? <laughs> but it's just it's just great. I, I love, Nicole, that, that you said that you go to therapy. Again, I'm sorry that it's not maybe providing the results that you need. But I don't know, again, maybe there's there's something, I feel like there's something else going on in your situation. And maybe you haven't even been able to put your finger on it. And that's okay. We also have different money personalities. So I am what I call a maximalist. So I'm kind of like a go big or go home person. That's like my dominant personality, money personality. And he's an anxious spender. So he's nervous about spending money all the time. So we have these two very different languages around money. But we try to meet each other in the middle, especially when a money issue comes up so that we can understand why the other one maybe is having an issue or how they're they're looking at the situation. If you don't understand your money personality, You cannot understand what you bring to a situation, right? And then you cannot understand your partner's money personality. So it's kind of like, you know, we got to get all the chess pieces like on the board and we got to see what we're dealing with. And then when we can kind of see the whole picture, then we can change the scenario. We can change our reactions. We can talk about our feelings. We can just have these honest conversations. And we also understood that money can very much be a a weapon. And we wanted to have a partnership where we agreed not to threaten each other with money. And I know this happens in so many relationships where you're like, um, well, if you go out and spend more money on XYZ, I'm going to go out and spend money on this or I'm not going to pay this bill, or I'm going to leave you, or I'm going to leave and take all the money, or I'm going to drain the bank accounts, or whatever it might be, right? There's a lot of sabotage that goes on in relationships with money. And the problem is, is you're often doing that in a moment of intense emotion and not clearly thinking through what happens after that time period. So I I, I want you to, to have somebody that you can call or figure out whatever it takes, go for a walk, call your mom, I don't, whatever it takes to just not be reactive in those moments, because those things are really hard to undo. And again, oftentimes end up hurting yourself as well. So we both made an agreement that, that was not something that we wanted to do to ever threaten each other with money. And lastly, we also decided that you know, it's our money, right? Every dollar is our money. Whether I make it, he makes it, however it comes in the bank account, it's our money. And I think this is important to go back to like the very first point I made about joint accounts. I know this because I've experienced working with so many different people with their money, right? But because money is very isolating, sometimes you can get in the headspace of thinking that, nothing is ever going to happen, especially if you're the one making more money. So you just never know what life throws at you. So 
if you are in a relationship where you guys want to have completely separate bank accounts, totally fine. But I also want you to have the conversation around what happens if something happens to one of us. What do we do about the money then? Because that's really the sticky, mucky part that you need to think about. And if you're in a partnership, I don't know. I think you kind of want to know that your partner's got your back. That's just my two cents. So the bottom line is that we accept that sometimes we need to have difficult or awkward conversations around money, and that's okay. They're not fun, but it's better than hiding a bunch of stuff, fighting about money and feeling really miserable. And I think talking about it can really relieve, I don't know, I'm going to be bold and say like 95% of your arguments. And being scared, it's totally normal. Again, money is this big, complex issue with so many onion layers. So I I don't know, I kind of think that if you weren't scared about getting married and meshing your money, I might actually be worried for you in that case. I think a little bit of fear is like really healthy, but I want to encourage you to use those scary feelings to have some open, honest, this is important, shame-free, guilt-free conversations with your partner. They might be feeling the same way you are, which is usually the case, but maybe they just don't know how to talk about it as well. And I, I just never want you to let money get in the way of living a healthy life. It's just pieces of paper. The feelings that you have around money, those are for you to choose. So I want you to just think about that for a minute. You get to decide the relationship you have with money and the level of importance money plays in your relationship with your partner. Of course, as always, I'm always going to say more money always helps. You cannot debate that. But It can't be everything as well because you can easily lose money and then you can also easily make money, right? So think about if there are any other relationship dynamics that maybe haven't been addressed but are coming out in your money fights. This is where this deep introspection around money, your money story, your money beliefs, where they really come into play. So I like to think about building a house or I love to eat. So let's use like a great pizza, right? (laughs) You need this foundation to build on. So look at your relationship like that. Is there a good foundation or do some things really need to be talked about, even if they're uncomfy and those might be impacting your, your money fights. So just, just food for thought after having been a part of hundreds and hundreds of couples trying to do the same thing you're trying to do, create a healthy relationship and stop letting money get in the way. It's not easy, Nicole. I will give you that, but I have faith that you can totally do it. So lastly, I will just say, always listen to your gut, my friend. It will never steer you wrong. So if at the end of the day, you're just feeling like you and your partner are not good money and life partners, then that's totally fine as well, right? It's not the end of the world. Again, you have choice in all of this, so I want you to feel empowered. So thanks again for a great Ask Shauna question Take some time today, love on yourself, love on your money, trust your money to be there when you need it, and then go on and live your life. And hopefully this opened up maybe something for you to have a conversation with your partner as well, or just hand them the episode, tell them to listen to the episode. If you enjoyed it, share it with someone that you know would greatly benefit from this information. As always, you can head the show notes for all the links to our wonderful episode sponsors who make this podcast possible. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance, so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value.